Good afternoon, I'm just up here at Steep Hill, Steep Hill Down Road at the moment. And I'm going to walk up across Steep Hill or Rue Down, local nature reserve. There's a chiff chaff singing just there nicely. Let's see if we can hear it. Is it going to sing again? Gone a bit further up towards the uh, cemetery, I think. There's a robin anyway. Blackbird. Wren in the distance. Chiff chaff in the distance. Let's uh, walk this way. Going to be slightly into the sun, so at least initially I'm going to do a loop around. So hopefully as we come back the sun will be less in our faces. But uh, we'll see. Interesting to see how this uh, section of the road up to the golf course has uh, sunk. They've only just, well, fairly recently repaired it again. It kind of crosses the Graben, which obviously goes down. Steep hill down road continues on to Old Chute, going east, east direction. But uh, we're basically on the bank of the Graben going up here. Uh, it looks like they've repaired this little bit of road again where it dropped off. So I put some more tarmac in just here. It's going to keep moving though. One of the issues here is uh, the more you put concrete down, the heavier the road surface gets, I suppose, and that's just going to make it drop again. So, kind of a no wind situation there. Interesting to see how this uh, camera handles the looking. God, this has really cracked up the road here. This, I think, is new. Zoom in a little bit. Not sure how clear the cracks in the road surface are on this, but uh, not good. So I'm recording this later in the day because I've been quite busy during the day as in recent last couple of weeks which is why I've uploaded fewer videos but uh, I'll get back on it I promise looking kind of southeast now towards Ventnor up towards the cemetery Nice white throat singing just down there. Lots of rooks and a few carrion crows calling. Kind of a kind of a annoyed white throat call there. Obviously, it doesn't want me standing here in its territory. I wonder if that lesser white throat is on territory up here. It's normally in the little clump just over there, just under the sun up there. <laughs> you probably can't see very well. So the sward here is a lot taller and ranker than it should be. Uh, it's uh, managed by Gift to Nature, which is an organisation that kind of inherited a lot of these bits of, or these nature reserves from the Isle of Wight Council. So Isle of Wight Council decided they didn't have the funds to manage their nature reserves, so they've handed over the management to Gift to Nature, which of course doesn't have any funds, really. So it's a constant battle to try and get any of these sites actually managed properly. And some of them are really deteriorating now including this site, which is looking in a really poor condition, um, just because it isn't being grazed, which, it, what it, which is what it needs. But, um, yeah, it's not good. I 
What a beautiful evening. What is it, about 6.30 in the evening now, I think, roughly. Looking kind of west along the coastline now. There's a, let's see if I can zoom into Woody Head. It's as far as I can zoom from here. But, um, get a slightly closer view as we go up towards the uh, hill box. So what have I been doing today? I did some more writing, which is good. A couple of hundred words written, a bit of editing in one of the books that will be coming out at some point. And, uh, uploaded a short video on my uh, Wild Writer channel. So Steve Jones Wild Writer, if you want to see that one. Search for that on YouTube and do subscribe if you wouldn't mind because I'm trying to get the subscriber count up on that channel as well. On that channel I talk a lot more about, I will be over the summer talking a lot more about wildlife conservation sort of stuff. Rewilding, which is a bit trendy but has a good scientific basis which I'll be talking about. Um, whereas this channel, Cornish Van Dweller, which may become the Coastal Car Dweller, <laughs> if I ever get around to renaming it and if I've got the uh, courage to do so, um, this channel covers more about digital nomadism and uh, living in a car uh, for as long as I live in a car, which may not be much longer, we'll see. And obviously videos from the Isle of Wight are on both channels, because that's where I am, obviously. So uh, some of the chalk grass and wildflowers are beginning to come into bloom now. There's old, uh, is this bird's foot trefoil? The yellow stuff here. Hold on, let's remember how to use this. Okay, so it's, bear with me, still learning how to use this device. See if it can close focus on this trefoil. Pretty sure it's bird's foot trefoil. There's this stuff which I can't remember the name of, the little blue flowers. And the little flower head of, um, uh, remind me, Salad Burnett. That's the stuff. Now what I haven't quite worked out yet with this uh, Osmo Pocket 3 is how good the close focusing on things like wildflowers is going to be. So I'll work that out as I go along. But uh, what I might have to do is get a... I don't know if I can get a macro attachment for this thing. But if not, I might have to pick up a, some sort of low cost kind of... Specialist macro type camera video thingy um, to put it technically just so I can combine some of these that's tilting the wrong way isn't it let's tilt it back up that's better so I can combine some of these uh, landscape type shots with uh, close-ups of butterflies and bumblebees and wildflowers but it may well be that this Osmo Pocket 3 is good at doing that and I just haven't discovered the way to do it, the correct settings and that kind of thing. Lots and lots to learn. For now I'm just using it out of the box. I think it's doing a pretty good job. Some of the feedback I'm getting which I much appreciate is that the, um, the quality on this is better than the iPhone Mini 13 which is as you would expect. But yeah, in terms of what I have achieved this morning, some writing, a bit more digging in that flower bed at Besties, and um, uploaded a video, uh, applied for a job. <laughs> so I'm still looking for part-time work so I can have a bit of additional cash flow to help fund this kind of video content creation and book writing and all the rest of it in the, in the early months, early years. So I still aspire for all of this to be 
self-sustaining by the end of 2025. Originally, it was a I had a little uh, playlist on my YouTube channel called "Breaking Free in 2023." The idea being that by the end of last year, I would have uh, achieved full digital nomadism and be completely location independent. But then I had some costs associated with them, um, family, and that kind of scuppered that. But now my realistic plan is to be location independent uh, with multiple streams of income by the end of 2025. So you're going to hear a lot about that as things go along. I'm going to give updates on the YouTube channel income. So obviously I get ad revenue now, which is about, it's dropped a little bit. So it's about £2.70 a day from about £3.50 a day. It's dropped off because I've not uploaded as many videos in the last week or so. And it does drop off that quickly when you don't upload as many. It's quite a grind actually having to, well, not having to, but uploading a video a day or two a day, as I quite often do. It's surprisingly, well, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not hard work. It's just uh, you have to get out and about to do it. And that in itself costs lovely wildflowers there. But I wouldn't want to be doing anything else, so... It's brilliant, and I love the support I'm getting from uh, some more of that burst for treffle and a white throat singing. Look at that, beautiful. So I think probably common, no, not common blue, probably chalk hill blue or something lays its eggs on the trefoils. I need to look that up. Uh, lovely white throat singing down there. Yeah, so uh, you probably noticed the screen brightened up there or the vegetation came brightened up. So I currently just tap the screen on this Osmo Pocket 3 to uh, sort out the exposure type thing, which I don't understand anything about. But uh, I'm told there you can do presets uh, to kind of film, get better quality images depending on the conditions which I need to sort out um, but now I have a really good device to do all this on uh, I will put in the effort apply myself a bit better just uh, trying to remember what this shrub is here native chalky loving shrub I was going to say dogwood, and it has got the red stem, so it may be dogwood. Tell me in the comments section if you know. It's got flower buds appearing. There is lots of dogwood up here, and it does have red stems, so I think that is dogwood. What's the Latin name of dogwood? Somebody remind me. I should do a live stream, then you can uh, remind me as I'm walking along. <laughs> but for now, just give me give me some comments in the comments section if you remember the Latin name of dogwood. What a beautiful evening! There's a lovely. Rose there, is it, um, field rose probably. Rose arvensis. Now, if I was a red bat shrike, and if there were any of me in the UK, I'd be hunting from that strand of a uh, field rose. If it is field rose, pretty sure it is. Tell me if you know. It's not a very good view. I'm not going to climb through the brambles to get a closer view. Yeah, trying to, trying to operate the zoom, that's better.
It's a nice close rose just here. Pretty sure it's Arvensis, field rose. Could be dog, no it's not dog rose is it? Rosa canina, is that what it's called? So I think that's Arvensis, but I could be completely wrong. Had a red kite fly over Ventnor Bay around about midday today. Flew straight over the beach and there was another one reported somewhere else on the islands, can't remember where. Um, so red kites must be on the cusp of colonising the Isle of Wight now. They don't breed here. You occasionally get the odd one or two summering but uh, it can only be a matter of years, short number of years before they gain a bit of a toehold or a talon hold, whatever it is that birds of prey do. <laughs> um, they're kind of, I don't think they're colonial, but they loosely associate with each other breeding pairs in summer. So I think I'm right in saying that you need a few pairs venturing onto Isle of Wight at the same time for them to actually colonise. That may not be true as a raven just coming up. That may not be true, so if you know. Is that a raven? No. Uh, I think it is actually. Lots and lots of ravens now. Uh, so, oh no. I thought I'd seen something interesting there, but it wasn't. Long tail tits calling. There's a gold crest in there somewhere. That it just flew over. Is that a oh, hold on a minute, scare my binoculars? Can't see it now, which is annoying. Kind of looked like a missile thrush, but uh, as far as I know, there is there's no pairs of missile thrushes up here. It's big enough though. What else is missile thrush size with that kind of... Hopefully I've picked it up on the... Oh, it's still there. Hold on. Good grief, it's just a blackbird. Okay, so I've had to switch back to the iPhone Mini because the SD card is full on the uh, on the Osmo Pocket jobby. So uh, I'm going to have to go onto Amazon and order a SD card with a much bigger memory, I think. Um... Interesting comparison though, isn't it? In terms of sound and picture quality. So on the old Osmo and bobbing, degree of bobbing. <laughs> I'm never going to get rid of the bobbing because I'm an extreme bobber. Um, but uh, you, can always, you can already see that my... I'm no gimbal. So uh, it's going to be very juddery the rest of this video but I'm glad I have my iPhone mini 13 with me so yeah that was a blackbird nothing exciting chiff chaff singing pheasant pheasant not pheasant pheasant actually not pheasant either ph Yeah, that's one thing that uh, is more tricky is avoiding doing this when I'm walking, which I do with the iPhone. I need to record 
on that sort of plane, which uh, the camera does brilliantly. Maintains the right level with the phone. I have to keep an eye on where I'm pointing the phone, poor old me. Let's get some uh, so I think this is going to be this is going to be recorded more, recorded more clearly on the phone. Might be wrong. Tell me what you reckon. So the uh, the screen on the Osmo Pocket is uh, obviously tiny compared to my iPhone Mini. Even um, so it's quite difficult to see how sharp. You know, when I'm right up against a plant, how sharp the image actually is, whether it's properly focused on the plant or not. I can see that much more clearly on the bigger iPhone screen. But of course, there is the app, which goes with the Osmo, which I have got on my phone. So the Nemo app, which basically displays what the camera is seeing, what the Osmo camera is seeing, displays it on my iPhone. And I can control the recording and the a lot of the settings on the Nemo app, which is all very funky. It's really uh, disconcerting that, that I'm out of breath. So song thrushes love these gorse. I love the gorse up on the gravel cap of steeple down here it's the best of both worlds from then they've got the uh the gorse to nest in which is lovely and protective for them and they've got the calcareous soil which is absolutely full of um snails which obviously song thrushes love to eat so you've got great nesting habitat and great foraging habitat so I'm not surprised song thrushes are doing very well here. Well, I say doing very well, I know nothing about their productivity. So certainly on territory and defending territories, whether they're getting many chicks off is anybody's guess. But I would assume they probably are, because gorses provides very good protection for the nest. What's that up there? Hold on. That's a Corvid coming this way. Oh yeah, somebody had a bee eater this morning over Bond Church. So I need to keep an eye on the wires. It's probably long gone by now, but uh, it's always worth checking the wires for a bee eater. Having a preen in the late afternoon sun, early evening sun. Right, give me loads of feedback in the comments. What's that singing? White fruit, presumably. Stopped. Yeah, it's a white fruit. Yeah, as I was saying, give me some comments in the comment section. Compare and contrast the uh, video and audio quality between now, the iPhone Mini 13, and uh, the Osmo Pocket 3, DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Be great to hear what you think, especially people that are watching it on bigger TV screens. Does the quality of either degrade, particularly on a bigger screen? Not sure I can do anything about it, it would just be interesting. Walking back uh, east now, so facing away from the sun. Well, I can certainly see that I'm bobbing more on the iPhone. Sorry, I'm bobbing just as much as always, but uh, the phone is compensating less for it. Wonderfully calm sea. It's 
I wonder when glow worms come out. I know there are glow worms around here somewhere. I've personally never seen one on Rudown, but uh, one kind of insect specialist who lives with his garden backing onto this nature reserve has had them in his garden. So logically, there must be glow worms here. Probably the rougher grassland, presumably, is a bit better for them than when it was very tightly grazed chalk grassland. Of course, it does need to be tightly grazed chalk grassland because a lot of the specialists, the other specialists, that's what they need. Cow parsley, that's what this stuff is. Finally remembered it. How could it possibly take that long? So yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you've not already done so to this channel and hop over to me, uh, Steve Jones Wild Writer channel and subscribe to that one as well if you wish to do so. And like the video, if you like the video. There's a hawthorn in flower there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Oh, can I see any of the flowers there? Just about centre screen. May blossom. There's some elder just up there with also white flowers. Just about to see that, maybe. If I point it in the right direction, there it is. Elder, what's the Latin name of Elder? Is it Sambucus Niger or something like that? I don't know, Hawthorne is Grategus Monogyna, I think. Or cow parsley. Lovely uh, hazelnuts in here. Well, hazels in here. Should imagine the dormice, which are common in this part of the undercliff, should imagine they like this little copse. But they also like the open scrub, it seems. Bit of a myth that dormice are specialists of closed canopy woodland. Well, it's probably not a myth. They probably are specialists of closed canopy woodland. It's just they also like open scrubby habitat. As long as there are some patches of woodland nearby. I don't even know if that's a necessary condition to be honest um i would have thought this little copse here would be enough to keep dormice happy if they do need this taller woodland but they're common in the scrub around here as well apparently should try and do some night time uh, recording Sat on the wires over there. Probably the kestrel. Yeah. One kestrel. It's a good time for a migrant hobby or even a red footed falcon, of which I've only had one in the undercliff. That was a very late one actually. That was, uh, I think that was October one year, quite a few years ago. I was ordered to check it wasn't an Amur falcon by birders who know that sort of thing, and it wasn't. It's just a red foot. Just coming back onto the track that leads up to the golf course now. I'm going to drop back down to Steep Hill Down Road. Then I'm going to go down into Ventnor Bay, try and work out what food to do this evening. So I recently bought one of those camping gas type stoves, just a single ring type gas stoves for the car, which is what I had for about five years in the van. So I bought that, I bought one of those the first day I moved into the van in February 2018. God, that was a long time ago. And uh, I only got rid of that when the van finally imploded on itself late last year. Then I bought a jet boil. I could never get on with the jet boil. I've still got it in the van. So I went back to buy and bought a, 
not the camping gas version, I decided to save some money and buy a cheaper version of the same type of stove. And of course it's rubbish. So, um, you know, the gas regulator only goes halfway and uh, the actual gas kind of a uh, pipey thingy, whatever it's called, that leads up to the ring where the burner is, is loose. It's not very, uh, yeah, it's just shoddy build. Surprise, actually, because I would have thought they were just all this manufactured in the same place and just labelled, depending on the company that uh, was selling them. But no, nope, quality does definitely vary. So I'm going to have to go back onto Amazon and buy a... Well, I'll have to think about how I'm going to cook. What I'd love to do in the... When I do finally save enough to get an actual van is go all electric, go for a induction type system. So have solar panels, three or four solar panels on the roof of a van and have a big uh, power pack type thing set up. You know, kind of a... I don't know, Bluetti or Power Oak or Goal Zero type, uh, ledger battery type setup, and just use just use those to drive a single induction type hob thingy. Be a lot safer than the uh, than the gas I'm using in my confined space, especially using a dodgy old cheap camping stove. White fruit in there, chattering away. Somebody correct me if that wasn't a white throat. It's kind of following me down now. This is that clump where the lesser white throat is often on territory each summer. What's that up there on the wire? Is it a linnet? Yep. Don't know if you can pick him out on the telegraph wire, probably not. Oh, it's male linnet, so they've got a territory in here. They, they nest in little clusters. Linnets obligate seed eaters, so they, they feed their chicks in the nest on seeds, and then when the chicks fledge, they immediately go down onto the Chalk grass underneath, more seeds. They don't eat insects. What's that perched up there? Is it just a... Looks like a newly fledged carrion crow on the wires there. Get a bit closer. What's that flying along there? Yeah, wood pigeon. So you are... Yeah, it looks like a young carrion crow. Just over there. Hold on, let's zoom into it so you can see what I'm talking about. That, that dot there is a carrion crow. Very young one. Doesn't look very happy. Looks a bit lost. Shift chaff in the background. Yeah, definitely looks a bit miserable. They've come out today of the nest. There's a jackdaw there. Great tip. Right, uh, hope you enjoyed this little video. It's quite a short one. Well, it's not a short one, actually. It's quite a long one. <laughs> but, um, yes. Wow, this, uh, this road really is slipping. You can see how it's shifted down slope, a section of the surface. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Do uh, subscribe to the channel, click the like button, 
read the description underneath the video where there'll be various links and uh yeah if you wish to support me on drive buy me a coffee then that would be wonderful um and i will upload another video tomorrow So I hope you're enjoying this video about uh, Ventnor and the Undercliff. If so, then don't forget there are two books I've written. One, Birdwatching Around Ventnor, creatively named, and the second one is uh, Wildlife Watching Around Ventnor. Just short books um, about the local area that are the subject of this video, available on Amazon. I'll put a link below this uh, video, and um, you can also order it from the library and it's available in all major bookshops both of these little book bits and in a few shops along the esplanade like the uh, longshoreman's museum and uh, lady scarlet's tea room as well but um yeah i'll put a link to the description if you want a slightly deeper dive into the uh, isle of white undercliff and these two little book bits might be of interest to you just go onto amazon otherwise and just search for steve jones and ventnor and you should find them